Number one has us looking at angle B and it tells us that it's an acute angle in a right triangle. It wants us to approximate the measure of angle B if we know that the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse is 0.67. So you're going to need to use your right triangle table from lesson four. And they told us opposite divided by hypotenuse, which is this middle column. And we know that that's um, 0.67. So we're going to look for a number close to 0.67 in the table. And we see that right here. So we'll know that um, the angle is between 40 and 50 degrees because 0.67 is between 0.64 and 0.76. I would say um, 0.67 is closer to 0.64, so I would pick a number closer to 40. So maybe like 43 degrees or 42 or 44, um, but something like that to approximate the measure of that angle. Number two wants us to estimate the values to complete this table. Um, remember that we looked at if two angles add to 90 degrees, which we know that these A and C do, since all the angles added together will equal 180, whoops, and we see that we've already used up 90 of it, we know that A plus C will equal 90. And when that happens, they flip-flop these numbers. So this 0.97, okay, goes to the point, or goes to the opposite. So adjacent over hypotenuse moves to opposite over hypotenuse, and um, opposite over hypotenuse moves to adjacent over hypotenuse. Then for this final category here, um, you can take, this is opposite divided by adjacent. So opposite divided by adjacent. So we'll take the column with the opposite, which is 0.97. And we'll divide that by the column with the adjacent, which is 0.26. And that will give us um, about 0.7, oh, sorry, 3.73 for this one. Number three, Priya says, I know everything about a right triangle that has a 30 degree angle and a hypotenuse of one centimeter. Here, look. So let's kind of fill out what she tells us as we go. So she said, if it gives her a 30 degree angle and then a hypotenuse of one, she'll know everything else. So if she was given, this is 30 degrees it's a right triangle, and then the hypotenuse was one centimeter. She, she says she knows everything else. So she knows that this angle is gonna be 60, that the um, leg adjacent to the 30, so next to the 30 is gonna be 0.866 centimeters long, and that the leg across from the 30 degree angle is gonna be 0.5 centimeters. So then Han asks, I wonder what would happen if the hypotenuse was actually um, two centimeters instead. So we know that the triangles are going to be similar because they have all the angles the same. So if this one is now two centimeters long, we would just need to figure out a scale factor. So this is going to be twice as big as one centimeter. So the scale factor is equal to two. So the other side lengths are just going to be twice as long. So we would just multiply these together or multiply these by two, and that would get us the new side lengths. So this new um, adjacent side would be 1.73 centimeters. And 0.5 times two would make this new opposite side be one centimeter if the hypotenuse um, was moved to two centimeters and the angles would stay the same. Number four, this triangle that they give us is equilateral. Find the value of X. So we know that X is this altitude um, and we know that the altitude is this short leg times the square root of three when we're in a, an equilateral triangle. And we know that this length here is half of the whole side. So this is four. 
So you can think of it as half the hypotenuse. You can also remember that it's half of this length here, which is also eight. So this is four, and then this um, altitude will just be that shorter leg times the square root of three. So X is gonna be four square root three. And then what's the measure of angle B? So remember this was an equilateral triangle, which is also equiangular. So we know that that angle B will be 60 degrees. Number five, an equilateral triangle has a side length of eight. What's the area? So we could draw an equilateral triangle here. Um, we know that the side length is eight. We need the altitude to find the area. And we know the altitude is the square root of three times bigger than this segment. So we know this segment here is four, okay, since it's half of the eight down here or half of the hypotenuse. And then we know this altitude is just going to be that leg times the square root of three. So four square root three. So then when we go to find the area, we'll do the base, which is this whole length here, okay, which is eight, since all the sides are the same length, times the height, which is that altitude, four square root three, divided by two. That's the area formula for a triangle, base times height divided by two. So on the top here, we get 32 square root three divided by two. So we'll do the 32 divided by two and get 16 square root three. And then since it's area, we'll also have square units. Number six, what is the length of the square's side? So we know that a square creates a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we know that in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, um, the hypotenuse and the leg are a square root of two factor away from each other. So if we have the hypotenuse, we divide to get the leg, remembering that the leg is shorter than the hypotenuse, so we'll divide by square root of two. So this leg is going to be six divided by square root two, and that is answer choice B. Number seven, a step has a height of six inches, and then there's a ramp that is five feet away, and it makes a 5.9 degree angle with the ground. So let's just fill this out. So we've got this at um, whoops, six inches. And then the ramp is five feet away. And then we know that this angle here is 5.9 degrees. What can you say about the angle of the ramp um, if the ramp starts closer to the step? So if we moved this ramp closer to the step, so we ended up more with this triangle here. So we could say that this angle right here is actually getting bigger. It's going to increase. That's because we can see that this angle up here is small. The green angle up here is smaller than this blue angle because it's contained inside. We know this stayed 90. So if this one is getting smaller, this one has to be getting bigger since we know they always total 180. Number eight, we have this quilt design that's made with square diagonals. The length of BD, this segment here, is four. And then let's find the length of AE. So AE is this piece. So first we can go ahead and find the length of AD, and then we know AE will be half of that. And so we see this 45, 45, 90 triangle being created here since it's half of that square. So we know that this orange side length will be the hypotenuse 4 divided by the square root of 2. So that orange side length is just 4 divided by square root 2. And so that's for um, AD. And if you wanted, you could do the decimal version of that. Um, so that's going to be 2.83. Then if we want the blue piece, okay, so when we're getting AE, that's going to be half of this, okay? So AE is going to be that 4 square root of 2 divided by 2 or half of it. So let me do multiplied by a half. 
because then I'll get four on top, two square root two on bottom. So I could just divide here and say two divided by square root two. So here's one way you could write it. You could also just take this 2.83 and divide by two, which would be um, like 1.41. So that's the decimal version of AE. Then for part B, it wants the area of the square, okay? So the area of the square and is just gonna be base times height. And um, of this square is these orange lengths. So we know that it's just gonna be four divided by square root two times four divided by square root two. So it's gonna give us 16 on top. The square root of four, which is two on the bottom, um, and 16 divided by two is just eight, and then square units since it's area.